Today we visit another piece when discovered London, but perhaps one that's better known than most. Felton Palace, childhood home of Henry VIII, and later rebuilt by Stephen and Virginia Coulter, has also featured in many films and TV, including Bright Young Things and Vampire Earth. It was even in the video for Marina and the Diamonds song. Elton Palace is a large house in Elton within the Royal Borough of Greenwich in South East London, England. It's an unoccupied royal residence and owned by the Crown Estate. The original palace was given to Edward II in 1305 by the Bishop of Durham, Anthony Beck, and was used as a royal residence from the 14th to 16th century. According to one account, the incident which inspired Edward III's foundation of the Order of the Garner occurred here. This area is actually one of Henry VIII's sewers. Yes, attractive. And it actually did smell like one as well. This is the ruins of the original Elton Palace. It's pretty incredible. It's, they've still got some intact. Because it was, um, I think it was sacked during the Civil War, so. Um, the last uh, member of the royal family to uh, stay here at all, I think it was Charles I. And um, yeah, so it's pretty impressive that there's still some that left. As a favourite palace of Henry IV, they paid host to Manuel II Paleologos, the only Byzantine emperor to ever visit England. There's still a jousting tilt yard. Edward IV built the Great Hall in the 1470s. A young Henry VIII, back when he was known as Prince Henry, also grew up here. It was here in 1499 that he met and impressed the scholar Erasmus, introduced by Thomas More. Erasmus described the occasion. I'd been carried off by Thomas More, who had come to pay me a visit on an estate of Mount Joy's where I was staying, to take a walk by way of diversion as far as the nearest town, Elton. For there, all the royal children were being educated. Arthur alone accepted, the eldest son. When we came to the hall, all the retinue was assembled. Not only that of the palace, but Mount Joy's as well. In the midst stood Henry, age nine, already with certain royal demeanor. I mean, a dignity of mind combined with a remarkable courtesy. More with his companion, Arnold, saluted Henry and presented to him something in writing. I, who was expecting nothing of the sort, had nothing to offer, but I promised that somehow, at some other time, I would show my duty towards him. At the time I was slightly indignant with Moore for not giving me any warning, especially because the boy, during dinner, sent me a note inviting something for my pen. I went home, and though the muses from whom I'd lived apart so long were unwilling, I finished a poem in three days. On the first floor, many of the bedrooms reflect the Cunard style made popular by the fashionable cruise liners of the time, featuring built-in furniture and smooth veneered surfaces, often with curved ends. Perhaps the most exotic room is Virginia Courtard's vaulted Art Deco bathroom, lined with gold mosaic and onyx, complete with gold-plated bath taps and a statue of the goddess Psyche.
Gotthold's were friends with many people in high society and government, including the Conservative MP, Rab Butler, who drafted his 1944 education bill at Elton Palace. He possibly warned them about the impending war when they bought Elton Palace in 1936, because they took the precaution of reinforcing the basement with cement to make a bunker which they and their staff would later use. The basement was split into two rooms, one a temporary living quarter and the other a game room with a billiards table for their entertainment in confinement. Conveniently, the bunker was located next to the wine cellar too. The billiards room is one of the five new rooms on display. features a mural by the British artist Mary Anshead, a renowned mural painter of the 1930s, whose work, the court arts, would have seen on luxury cruise liners. The mural depicts St Cecilia, was brought from the Courtauld's previous home in Grosvenor Square. It also features the Courtauld's pet, Lena Lina. Born the youngest of six children in 1883, Stephen Courtauld inherited a fortune from his family's textile firm. Stephen, who studied natural science at Cambridge University and fought in World War I, was an investor in the Ealing Film Studio. His other interests lay in orchids, mountaineering, majolica and old masters. Thank you.